Uh, we have the New York Stock Exchange. We have news all over the place. A lot of banks, Bank of America, Union Bank. Singa would be another Singer example, another big one. right? All, every, well, every major cloud uses Puppet in many ways for large-scale automation, right? Where did you where did you come from before you, you joined? Puppet? I actually ran Puppet at Google for a number of years before I came here. We use that to manage internal desktops, laptops, and servers. So not Google.com, not Gmail, but everything else for the people who need to build those services. How awesome is that? Now, so where the heck am I going with this, right? Why don't we show a quick little demonstration of the thing that we announced today, and then I think you guys will see how it all ties together. So we've got this thing that we developed internally at EMC called Project Razor, right? Razor is uh, named after the idea of like Occam's Razor, simple solution to a simple question, which is how can we automate bare metal builds? What I'm doing here is I can log in, and I can basically discover all sorts of servers as they're powering up. It's basically using a Pixie microkernel Pixie microkernel installs, it gets connected, and here you can see all of those hosts are servers. It uses this model which allows you to then go and say, okay, I've just discovered this server, it's a Dell powered server. I mean, a Dell, Dell, whatever, right? Um, so, so, you know, in, in here it's got, you know, you can see CPU counts, you can, no offense, of course, I mean, it's all good. So, and then you can basically tag those nodes with names so you can start to manage them at very large scale. So, for example, here we're going to go and take a look at another node, and hey, this is a UCS server. All right. So you can see that we've tagged them, and here there's a mixed bag. We've got some Dell, we've got some HP, we've got some UCS blades, right? And then what we can do is we can actually integrate it with Puppet, right? So basically what this then does is we can go and we can very rapidly provision many, 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 many nodes all at once. So for example, here we're saying, you know, we're going to integrate this into the Puppet environment. And when you, when you see what we're able to do with this, it's amazing. So basically we said, okay, there's a broker, we've connected it up, and now we're going to say, we want to build a policy where all of these servers are built as ESXi hosts using a standard template. But it could be other things too. It could be Linux, it could be, you know, all Linux variants, it could be an open stack deployment, all sorts of stuff, right? So any type of server, any type of environment. Here we're going to say anything that's a UCS server is a gold policy, right? Anything that's a HP server, we'll call it silver. And the other guy, we won't even bother with. Um, so what we did here is now it's integrated into Puppet. And we're, we're going to use Puppet to basically orchestrate constructing a vCenter instance. So if we want to build a vCenter instance, by the way, notice that all of the ESX hosts are starting to pop up. Like very, this can be completely automated. This is the idea of DevOps. How do you automate at large scale? The stuff that Paul was talking about when he says, hey, I want one admin to manage thousands of VMs, right? So what we're going to do is we say, okay, great. We want to, you can notice that basically the, the Razor server has been integrated here with, with Puppet. And we can go in and say, you know, we're going to manage and create a new vCenter instance. So who here has ever installed vCenter? I mean, come on. Right? It's awesome! I love VMware! Right? You need a SQL server. So notice that we're saying, hey, put, uh, using the model, we want a SQL server instance, we want a vCenter install, and now it's going to go off and it's actually going to install vCenter. Right? Now again, this can be all completely automated, and now if we go in and we take a look, we're going to kick off the Puppet agent that's going to run and run those processes in the background. After just a little bit of time, what occurs is we have our vCenter instance installed. We could even use this to automate a vCloud director install on top. Again, once the bare metal is up, Puppet can do almost anything, right? Simple, easy automation at scale. So now what's occurred is our vCenter instance is up here. Okay, great, it's still going through a little bit of the install, but after a few minutes, it's done. And then, boom, we can log into vCenter and check this out. We built this just for you. So if you take a look at, at the example here, when we log into vCenter, you're going to see the ESX host start to pop up and they're already automatically created into clusters that are associated with those policies. Gold being the UCS blade, silver being, you know, the, the HP stuff, right? So when we bring it up, you'll see them all start to automatically get added. Think about how long this would take and how many clicks and how many steps everyone would need to do if you were actually doing this all by hand, right? Again, automation is the key to operating clouds at scale. So, boom, discovering plugins, log into vCenter, and immediately you'll start to see ESX hosts start to populate. 
And again, if you take a look at the VMs that are being created, boom, 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 right? Notice the host getting populated. Again, if anybody's ever built a 16 node cluster in real time, this entire process took about five minutes. We're just compressing it down here so that you guys can see how the sausage is made, right? But notice that the VMs are coming up and there's a bunch of Zing, Zing servers and virtual machines that are coming up, right? So again, take a look at what that means to everybody here. You can automate everything from the bare metal all the way up to vCloud Director or frankly anything inside the VMs, right? Completely in an automatic way, even if you're using the mix and match model that you guys are currently using, right? And one thing I think is really cool, well, you know what, Ron, me, me explain a little bit more, you know, now this explains why Nigel is here, right? How good was that? How, look at that segue, right? How convenient, right? So this idea was born out of, you know, a little innovation that came within EMC. And as we were developing it, we started to air it around to folks because we were like, this isn't, you know, strictly within our sphere. And frankly, if we just use it to automate how we build green plum nodes and Avamar stuff, frankly, our cloud builder friends, our customers wouldn't be able to benefit as much. So we reached out to you guys. What's your perspective on it, Nigel? Sure, so Puppet's always been great at taking a machine and putting it to work. But we've had users move to the cloud, they've become used to the agility that you've got of just provision a new machine, yeah. kill it, provision a new one. And we just haven't had that with bare metal. And it was really exciting to start working with EMC. You guys started building on the platform we already had, automated inventory. This is one of the things, no more barcode scanners, no more Excel spreadsheets. Automatic inventory, up to date, no discovery, put the right image on the right machine and put it to work. And, and you know what's one thing that I think is cool? You can actually go, we've made this open. Yep, github.com slash puppet labs slash razor. It's all there now. So like Merry Christmas, anyone who's ever been doing this stuff by, by themselves, we just made your lives a lot easier. And you know how much it costs? I like that. Many customers use mix and match. What do you guys think is cloud builders? I think you know people that know me know I'm all about virtualization, but unfortunately, you know, not everything is running virtual yet. So to get this agility, like Nigel said, is a big deal. And, and I'm going to be honest. I mean, since the announcement and Nick's post went up this morning, I've already got emails in my inbox from my engineers digging through this stuff, wanting to know how we're going to implement it, and that's no lie. Awesome. I want to share. <laughs> Ten hours after we released the code, first pull request. <laughs> <laughs> transition, transform, IT as a service, this is going to accelerate that. And most importantly, the customer, right? Look at how I orchestrated this. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, you guys, imagine trying to, they're adding millions and millions of subscribers going from zero to 400 VMs in a heartbeat. Does this make your life easier? Of course, because it's usually, you know, we have more and more servers coming in and not more and more admins, so. Optimization is something I have to do, otherwise I'm unable to run my business. Awesome, awesome, Perfect. guys. Thank you for yep. being a customer. Thank you for being a partner. Thank you for being a technology partner. Thank you for being a partner. Wait, thank you. All oh, right. <laughs> uh, okay, guys, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to sharing the hair with you.